You guys may be seated for just a moment. It's trying to get me all choked up before I get up here. No, I'm, I'm thankful for what the Lord's done in my life. Um, looking back now, of all the small moments um, and the small pieces of the puzzle that have all been put together to lead us where we're at now, God does nothing by accident. I'm a firm believer of that. He does absolutely nothing by accident. I just want to just share how much I love Sister Bennett. She's just such a sweet woman of God. I love her. She prayed for me when nobody else was praying for me. So I'm thankful for her. Um, I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful for this church and the leadership of this church. We've got incredible leaders, some of the best leaders in the entire United Pentecostal Church are here at this church. So I don't know if you guys know it, but y'all have some famous people here. Brother Gaddy and Brother Smith and Brother Shane and um, Brother Jim Nitch, they're all, they're all famous in the United Pentecostal Church. They're incredible. So y'all, y'all don't know, but y'all, y'all, have got the, y'all have got the big wigs here. I'm thankful for them. Um, I want to give honor to my mom and dad. I want to give honor to Alexa, my fiance. She wasn't able to be here, but um, she loves you guys, and we're so thankful for all of you. Um, why don't we stand and getting ready for the reading of the word? I'm going to be reading from Exodus chapter 30, verse 25 through 31. And then I'll be reading from Ecclesiastes 10 and 1 as well. I think he's going to have it up there on the screen, Exodus chapter 30. Verse 25 and 21. I'm going to read from the King James Version just because I like the way that it um, phrases it a little better. So, and thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment. An ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. An apothecary was just a pharmacist. It shall be an holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith and the ark of the testimony and the table, and all his vessels, and the candlestick, and his vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all of his vessels, and the laver in his foot. And thou shalt sanctify them, that they may be most holy. Now that's a lot of furniture. Whatsoever touches them shall be holy. And then God says, Moses, and thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. And then Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 1 says, Dead flies. Say what? Dead flies. Y'all catch on a second. Say what? Dead flies caught the ointment caused the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. Go like this. <laughs> Say something stinks. Dead flies caused the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. And that's where I'm going to take my theme for this morning. Uh, my title is going to be The Flies in the Oil. The Flies in in the oil. Why don't we pray? Lord Jesus, right now we give you the glory and we give you the honor for what you're going to accomplish in this service here this morning. God, right now I submit my mind to you. I submit my words to you. Lord, that you would be able to use me as just a vessel to speak whatever you want to say today. God, I'm asking that right now you would anoint me and that you would anoint this congregation. Lord, that your spirit would be poured out in this house. God, right now we bind every single distraction. Lord, we bind every single lie that the enemy spoken. Lord, we bind shame and guilt and doubt and fear. And we loose your spirit that brings peace. God, we loose the gifts of the spirit to be in operation in this house this morning. God, and we're thanking you in advance for every single person that's going to be delivered. Every single person that's going to be healed and mended and put back together. We're giving you all of the glory and the honor. And in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. You may be seated. Turn to your neighbor and say something stinks. Some of y'all have been waiting to say that all morning. Oh, man. So the oil 
in Exodus chapter 30. So we see here God is speaking to Moses. They spent all this time putting all of this furniture of the tabernacle together and in the temple. So in the Old Testament, the way that people entered into the presence of God, it was only one time a year, and the priest was supposed to do it. And so he, he would walk in, and then he would pass by all these different pieces of furniture, which were talked about in Exodus 30 here. The, he would enter into the outer courts with praise, and then he would go to the altar of repentance, and then the laver where he would wash and then he'd pass by the pillars, and then he'd go to the candlestick and the table of shoe bread and the altar of incense, and where, that's where the Ark of the Covenant was. And the thing is, these pieces of furniture were just furniture until they put the oil on them. Because there was something that happened when the oil went on. He said, this oil isn't just anything, Moses. This is a holy anointing oil. This oil, when you place it on it, it's going to symbolize my presence. And my presence is now on those pieces of furniture. They were just furniture until the presence of God touched them. And then they became holy. And it says whatever touches them is going to be made holy. And then not only did he anoint the pieces of furniture, but then he went and he said, Moses, I want you to grab Aaron. He's been faithful with you through all of this. I want you to grab him and I want you to anoint anoint Aaron with the oil. And all the word anoint means in this context is just pouring the oil on him, smearing it. He, he put oil all over him. He anointed him. And the oil says that it flowed down Aaron, and then he had also anointed his sons. And then they also became holy. Not because they were any different or any better than anybody else, but because the presence of God through the oil made them holy. The presence of God made them holy. Holy. So the oil in the Old Testament, we see oil talked about a lot. Um, David was anointed to be king. Saul was anointed to be king. And we, hear, we see these words anointed, and every single time the prophets were anointed, and they, they would anoint with oil. And all that oil symbolized was the presence of God on them. You even see it when David was anointed, it said that the presence of the Lord came on him, and then the presence of the Lord left Saul. There was something very significant about the oil in the Old Testament. They needed the oil because the oil symbolizes the presence of God and they did nothing without the presence of God. They followed the presence of God as a pillar of fire. They, po- they followed the presence of God as a pillar of smoke. They followed the presence of God because they had nothing without it. And so throughout the Old Testament, we see this theme of oil symbolizing the presence and the spirit of God. So how is that represented today? So we hear people talking about the presence of God. Man, he was anointed. Have y'all ever heard that? And that man, you're anointed, man. You you keep preaching, man. You're anointed. Man, that was just the most anointed singing. Y'all ever heard? Y'all ever, am I the only one that's ever heard? But so they say that, and I'm like, man, for the longest time I was like, what in the world does that mean? I'm like, thank you, but what does that mean? Right? So Acts, in the book of Acts, when the Spirit fell, so Jesus Christ died and resurrected, ascended back into heaven. And Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says that ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And then you're going to be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. So something happened on the day of Pentecost when everybody came in one mind and one accord and they were waiting because God said, I'm going to send you a helper. And then that helper came down and the presence of God was no longer just on them, but then it was in them. So the presence of God came in and anointed them as they received the Holy Ghost and they spoke in other tongues. And then in 1 John chapter 2 verse 27, it says, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. So what happened from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the anointing was no longer something that was just on you, but the anointing is now something that's on the inside of you. So as the anointing comes on the inside of you, something begins to happen to you. You're made holy. I'm just going to throw this in here. If you've not yet received the presence of God in your life by the gift of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues, I just want you to know that it's for you. The Holy Ghost is real, and the initial sign of receiving the Holy Ghost comes in evidence of speaking in other tongues. 
I heard a story one time, pastor told it here in this church, there was a foreign exchange student, and he was from Korea or some sort of Asian country, and he heard somebody speaking in other tongues, and it was in his native language. Tongues is still real, y'all. And God is still using it, and he's still speaking, and he's still moving through his people. He's still anointing. And the way that we become anointed is by receiving the Holy Ghost. You don't have to have oil smeared on your forehead. You are anointed when you receive the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you become a son or a daughter of Christ through adoption. So it says when we receive the Spirit of God, we've not received the spirit of fear, but we've received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. That word cry is kradzo, is another word that they use for speaking in tongues. There is no high like the Holy Ghost. So when you get the oil in your life through the Spirit, the oil, when, when I say oil, I'm talking about the Spirit of God. I want you guys to, y'all with me? Y'all caught up with me? All right. When you have the oil come in your life, it's going to change you. When you get the Holy Ghost, it's supposed to change you. Because it says that the furniture was made holy, the priests and the sons of Aaron were made holy, and then it says when we receive the Holy Ghost, we're made holy. But what does that, what does that mean? Holy means to be separated. Separated from the world. Separated from what I feel like I want to do. Separated from what I feel like is best for me. And separated for what God wants for my life. Young people, when you get the Holy Ghost, you are anointed. And when you're anointed, you can do absolutely anything that God calls you to do. You don't have to be fearful. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be worried about what anybody else is going to say about you. Because when you get the Holy Ghost and that oil, is, it's not on you anymore. Because something on you can be taken off. It's on the inside of you. Nobody can take it from you. Nobody can buy it from you. Nobody can steal it from you. It is on the inside of you. And that goes the same thing for the parents and everybody else in the church. When the Holy Ghost comes inside of you, Nobody else can take it from you. Your mistakes and your past can't remove it from you. The decisions that you've made, they can't take it from you. It says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's what the Word of God says. And I believe what the Word of God says. So when the Spirit of God comes in your life, it's going to do something to you. It's going to start changing you. You're going to start wanting to change the way that you talk. You're going to start wanting to change the way that you dress. It's going to want to start changing the way that you act around people. You're going to be uncomfortable around some of the people that you were friends with. And you're going to feel more comfortable with people in the church as you should. It's called holiness. And holiness is when we're becoming more like Christ. So when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, it empowers us to not be like ourselves. To not just be, I can't, I won't, I won't just be Colby anymore. I'm going to be Colby empowered by the Spirit to be like Jesus Christ. It says that that same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ lives on the inside of you. That anointing abides in you. It's no longer on you because something on you can be removed. The Spirit is not going to be removed from your life. Once you get the Holy Ghost, nothing can take the Holy Ghost from you. The devil can't take the Holy Ghost from you. Holy. Holy. Holy, holy. What does the word holy mean? What, what am I supposed to do about holiness in my life? Is all right if I'm, if I, can I be candid this morning? Can I be candid? Holiness is going to completely change who you are. If you're walking around with your friends at school and they're talking about things that you know they shouldn't be talking about, that's holiness trying to work in your life. You should not talk like the people at your school talk. You shouldn't talk like the people at your work talk. You shouldn't do the things that all your friends at school do. And you shouldn't do the things all your friends at work do. We're called to be separate from the world. And when the Spirit of God comes on the inside of you and He anoints you, you're empowered to be separate from the world. 
So when somebody asks you, hey, man, you want to come drinking this weekend? No, man, I'm anointed. What? I'm anointed. Hey, man, you want to try this cigarette? No, man, I'm anointed. What? I'm anointed. Hey, hey, we're having a party this weekend. You think you and some of your friends would want to come? No, I'm anointed. Some of y'all are getting it. Hey, bro. So a couple of us, we're going to go drinking after work, and then after that, we're going to go hit the club. No, man, I'm anointed. Holiness is not just designed to change your life, but it's designed to keep the Spirit of God in your life. And when you get the Spirit and you're empowered by the Spirit, you're empowered to be holy because you've been anointed. So when somebody asks you to do something and you're like, "Uh," nah, man, I'm anointed. It's not a cop-out. It's not an excuse. It's a fact. And because I'm anointed, I walk different. Because I'm anointed, I'm going to talk different. Because I'm anointed, I'm going to do things that maybe nobody else is going to do. But I can't help it because I'm anointed. And because I've been anointed by the Spirit, I want to be different. I want to act different. I want to do different. I want to be above reproach. I want to set myself at a higher standard because I want to be like Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ came down and he said, hey, I'm anointed to preach the gospel. I came to proclaim the good news, preach deliverance to the captives, set at liberty them that are bruised, bring healing. And if I'm called to be like Jesus, and he said, hey, I'm anointed. And by his lifestyle, when he was anointed, he lived differently than everybody else. He was always countercultural. He was always making the Pharisees so mad. They just, they just didn't quite get it. And so they were always attacking him because he was different. When you're getting attacked for being holy, you should start rejoicing in that because I'm anointed. When you start getting attacked by the people at work, they're saying, hey, why are you always wearing skirts? Why aren't you ever talking like us? Why are you always asking us to change the music that we play? I'm holy. And I'm anointed. And because that, I want to protect the environment that I am around in. Holiness is not just going to affect your lifestyle in the church. It's going to affect your lifestyle at home. It's going to affect your lifestyle at work. It's going to affect your lifestyle at school. The thing is, you're not having to do it by yourself, y'all. You don't have to. My flesh is weak. I'll be honest. My flesh is weak. I'm tempted, I have struggles, I'm not perfect. But when I got Jesus Christ on the inside of me, something started shifting in my life. I wasn't necessarily not tempted anymore, but I had a burning desire to live for God a whole lot stronger than any of my temptations were. Because the Spirit of God says that it's a consuming fire, and it's going to start consuming everything in your life. Holiness. Somebody say holiness. Holiness. God's called us to be holy. 1 Peter chapter 1, 15 through 16. But just as he who called you is holy, be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. So I want to clear some things in the air for some people. When you get anointed by God, you are not better than anybody else. Just because I have the Holy Ghost, I'm not better than anybody else that I'm at work with. I may act different because I'm anointed. I know I understand the fact that I'm anointed, but I'm not better than them. I want us to just raise our hands right now. Lord, right now I ask that you just begin to speak to us what you want to speak. God, let not our own feelings get in the way. Lord, right now we bind every single thought that is high and exalted over the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Lord, and we loose your spirit to speak exactly the way that you want to say it. Exactly the way that you want to do it in this place, Lord. We're loosing you to have your way. Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name. God's reaching for some people in here to change your lifestyle. God's wanting to speak to you about some of the things that you've been doing in secret. Because your secret life affects your holiness. Just because it's not in the public eye doesn't mean it doesn't affect what's on the inside of you. What you watch affects you. What you see affects you. What you hear affects you. Um, Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 for me right quick. Verse 1. Right there it says, The dead flies in the ointment of the apothecary send forth a stinking savior. Stinking savior. When something stinks, it doesn't smell good. That same ointment in that verse right there, if you go back to Exodus chapter 30, verse 23, 24, 25, It's the exact same ointment that they're talking about when they were talking about the holy ointment. And if that's what's on the inside of me, there are things that can get in the oil that are going to start making it stink. There's going to be things that are going to get on the inside of my life that are going to start making the ointment stink. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 12. I think it's verse 24 that I gave you. So here's Jesus Christ is messing with the Pharisees again. It says, but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, the fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So what happened is Jesus Christ just cast out a demon, and then the Pharisees were like, oh, he's just doing that in the name of Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And he said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. If you look at that word Beelzebub on that screen right there, if you translate it into the Hebrew, it means Lord of the Flies. Lord of the flies. And if the flies are in the oil and they're causing it to stink, it's about time we got the devil out of the anointing. It's about time we got his hands away from my anointing. It's about time I got his hands away from my family. It's about time I got his hands off of my children. The reason some of us are having issues with, uh, with the oil in our lives and the spirit flowing in our lives is because the devil's hands are all over it. And so what I'm here to tell you is the flies that are in the oil right now are causing it to stink. But you have the authority and the power on the inside of you to remove the flies. Because you've been anointed by God, and when you're anointed, you're called for a special purpose. 1 Peter chapter 2 Verse 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God anoints you not just so that you can be anointed, not just so that you can have the spirit, but so that you can go out. But you can't go out if the devil's keeping you in. If the devil keeps stirring up all the flies in your life. Some of the flies that are in your oil are fear. Some of you are so absolutely scared of what people are going to think about you, you cannot step out in boldness. That's a fly of the enemy. And he's buzzing around in your ear. He's buzzing around in your mind. He's in the oil. And you got to get him out. Fear does not have a hold of me. Fear will not have a hold of you. For I've not received the spirit of bondage to fear, but I've received the spirit of adoption. By Christ, you have authority over fear. Anxiety is not of God. That's another fly that's gotten in the oil. we got to stop being so worried about everything that's going on. How am I going to make ends meet? What's going on around me? I can't seem to make everything come together quite like I want it to. It's a fly that's gotten in the oil and it's caused it to stink. Oh, my children, they're not serving God. They're not, they're not in the church. I, 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 don't, I don't know... If the enemy's speaking to you about it, it's because he doesn't have authority to do anything with it in your life. You guys, if the enemy's telling you that people are going to make fun of you for stepping out and being bold, he cannot do it. He has no authority to move in your life when he's starting to talk to you about it. If he keeps telling you, hey, it, it, you, you got to start cutting your hair. You got to start wearing pants. Hey, it, you guys, y'all should start talking like everybody else at school. He's telling you because he can't make you do it. And if he can convince you of it, then he's just got the fly in the oil. 
there are some flies in the oil of the apothecary, and it's starting to make a stinking savor. Alcoholism is another fly that's gotten in the oil. I'm just going to say it like it is, all right? Alcohol is not of God. Anything that you're putting on the inside of you that's changing the way that you act, that's changing the way that you think, that's changing the response time, God did not call us to be in strong drink. God wants us to be in control of what's going on in our lives. We have to be under submission. And if I'm not under submission to the Holy Ghost, I'm under submission to something else. And alcohol is one of those things that can start out small. And before you know it, you guys, y'all are going to parties every weekend. You're going to start drinking. You're going to start. I'm telling you because I was there. And it's a fly that will get in the oil and ruin your life. They're going to tell you that it's cool. They're going to tell you that it's fun. They're going to tell you that everybody else is doing it and that you should do it too. But I am anointed of God. And because I am anointed, I will not do what everyone else around me is doing. I will not act like everyone else is acting. I am anointed by God. I have the spirit of Jesus Christ living on the inside of me. An uncontrollable temper is a fly that's gotten in the oil. If somebody says something to you and you start, and your fuse is that short, you got to get that out of the oil. You got to get back to the altar. You got to get back to God. Lord, I'm submitting my emotions to you. Lord, I don't know what's been coming over me. Lord, I'm tired of being angry. I'm tired of being frustrated. I'm tired of taking it out on my children. I'm tired of taking it out on my friends at school. It's a fly that has gotten in the oil and it has to get out. If we keep allowing the enemy to put all these things in the oil, how in the world are we supposed to be the church? Because with all this stinking savor, why in the world are we confused about why people are going across the street? Because they're saying they have the exact same thing that we have. But the word of God tells us something different. We've got some flies that we've got to get out of the oil. I want us all to stand up. I know it's short right now, but God's getting ready to do something in this house. He's speaking to some people right now. I want you to just lift up your hands. If you don't have the Holy Ghost yet, you're about to get the Holy Ghost. If you've got some things on the inside of your life, God's about to give you the opportunity to come here and He's going to help you move the flies out of the oil. I want every hand lifted, every eye closed right now. Lord, right now, by the authority that's in the Word of God and the power that's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, we bind every single tactic that the enemies use to try to plague things on the inside of us. God, and right now, we loose your spirit, we loose your anointing. We loose your hand over these young people. God, we loose your hand over their parents. We loose your hand over their homes. Lord, right now, by the authority that's in the name of Jesus Christ, begin to tear down every single stronghold that's been built up. God, tear down every single wall that's been built up. Lord, right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, we loose your spirit to begin to purify and to begin to cleanse and to begin to restore. Lord, there are marriages that are about to be restored right now in the name of Jesus. There's relationships between parents and children children that are about to be restored in the name of Jesus Christ.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've been struggling with doubt and fear, I want you to just lift up your hand right now as an act of faith that God's about to deliver you. If you've been struggling with doubt and fear, if you see somebody's hand next to you, I want you to lay your hand on their shoulder. And I want you to know that you're anointed. We're going to pray. We're going to bind these things right now in Jesus' name. Lord, right now, by the authority that's in the name of Jesus Christ, we bind doubt and we bind fear that has plagued the minds and the hearts of men and women throughout this entire church. God, every age, every... God, right now, in the name of Jesus, fear has no hold on us any longer. Doubt has no hold on us any longer. Lord, and we loose them to operate in boldness being full of the Holy Ghost and full of authority that's on the inside of them. In the name of Jesus. Will you just play behind me? Just play behind me. The next time you feel in your spirit to start when you dance and when you worship, I don't want you to fear that. That should happen. You should get that excited about the Holy Ghost. We define worship culture. And when you're up here on the platform and you're worshiping, in the, in the audience, you have just as much authority to move the Spirit as anybody else up here. And you can begin to loose things and set things free as you begin to worship. The reason you keep feeling like you want to is because God's going to use your praise to break somebody else's chains. It's exactly what happened with Paul and Silas. They were sitting there in the prison and they started worshiping and they started singing. And chains started falling and breaking. Prison doors fell down. Walls fell down. This is different than anything I've ever been in a service with too. But I'm just trying to flow with what the Lord's wanting to do. God, we don't want anything fake today. God, we don't want anything fake today. I just want us to wait on the Lord. I just want us to wait on the Lord for just a second. There are people in this room right now that God has anointed and called to be used mightily by Him. And there are some flies that you've allowed to get into the oil in your life that nobody else placed there. But because you made decisions and you decided to take advantage of opportunities that you were in that were not of God, you've allowed flies to get in the oil. And right now, God is about to give you the opportunity to be completely delivered from what you've placed in your own life. I want everybody to come up to the front because I don't want to embarrass anybody. If this is just for one person, I'm okay with that.
I want everybody, if you're able, everybody, every single person, this is your first time, welcome to the altar. We've got a ton of room right up here up front. There's nothing scary about the front, I promise. So we can wait. Right now, by the authority that's in the name of Jesus Christ, God, I bind shame and guilt and condemnation that has plagued the minds of ministers. God, right now, I ask that you would begin to deliver us. Lord, we've made some decisions in our lives and we've allowed some things to get into our hearts and into our minds. God, and we need you to deliver right now. God, we're submitted to what you're wanting to accomplish and to what you're wanting to do. That's it. You don't have to have anybody lay a hand on you to get delivered. That's it. In Jesus' name. That's it. That's it. Somebody's getting delivered right now. I don't want you to I don't want you to lose focus. We still got plenty of time before we gotta leave. If you're praying, I want you to keep praying. There's been some people in here that have been bound up. They've been so worried about finances that they've not been able to take the next step. What God's calling them into. We heard an incredible testimony about God's provision today. I don't want you to be so scared about where the money's going to come from that you don't take the next step of the call and the will of God on your life. I want us to do something else right now just as the Lord is leading right now. I wonder how many men and young men would join with pastor right now and just step up here and we're going to have our men just stretch their hands out over this great congregation and pray over us. If you would join me, men, young men, you just feel led to to join with pastor. We're just going to raise our hands and speak blessing over every person here. I wish you'd stand and face the congregation if you would.
There's a powerful story in the Old Testament when Moses and the children of Israel were, were fighting. I believe it was against the Amalekites. That the Bible says that every time that Moses lifted up his hands, the, the battle was won. But when his hands would drop, it would switch and the enemy would start defeating the children of God. So Aaron and Hur got alongside of Moses and said, we're going to make sure the battle is won. And they propped his hands back up. Why? Because there's something powerful when we lift up our hands to the Lord. That's a signal that, Lord, we're asking you. Nothing in our power can do this. We're asking you to come down. And the Bible says, let me just give you a word from the Lord. The Bible says in the King James Version that when Moses' hands went up, that God discomfited the Amalekites. Now I know none of us use that word. None of us use that word. We don't even know what that word means. You know what that word means? Utterly destroyed the enemy. And this man just a few minutes ago started naming some things. And just as sure as I'm standing here in shoe leather right now, when he started naming some things, there were people in this room that that had your name on it. But let me tell you, there is a, there's a presence of God that wants to not just touch your life, but to utterly destroy what the enemy is trying to do in your life. And that power can happen right now in this room. I'm ready for God to destroy, utterly destroy. It's, it's, it's relegated by our willingness to let go. So in just a moment, I'm going to have these men just simply lift up their hands over this congregation. And if you're here and you just want a special release of God's anointing on your life right now, I am want to ask you without fear or hesitation to just throw those hands up at the same time and watch what God will do in just a few moments in this room. If you feel tears start to float, cry them out. You feel something start to well up and you want to speak out to the Lord, speak it out to God. There is a liberating power in this room right now. Amen. You can let go of something right now and God do something marvelous in our lives. Men, would you help us? Would you just lift up your hands? Yes. Come on, let's not hang on to it another moment longer. Let's not hang on to it another moment longer. Go ahead and there you go. Come on, it's not mystical. It's the power of God. Men are lifting up their hands and saying, I speak it over this congregation. I speak liberty. I speak freedom right now, Lord. I speak your blessing over this congregation, Lord. That the enemy is going to be utterly destroyed in the name of Jesus. Come on, when we let go of it, God can step into it. When we yield it over to Him, God can step in right now. Come on, man, that's it. Help us pray in the Holy Ghost right now. When we let go of it, God can step into it. When we yield it, God can step into it. In the name of Jesus, bondages and addictions be broken in the name of Jesus. Detrimental ways of thinking be broken in the name of Jesus. False imaginations be broken and consumed by the blood of Jesus right now. Anxiety be loosed in Jesus' name. Fear and intimidation and timidity be loosed in Jesus' name. Fear of stepping out into the next place God has for us. Be loosed in Jesus' name. Show us your glory, God. Show us your glory, God. Hallelujah. Oh. Alcoholism, we bind you in the name of Jesus. You won't have a foothold in my life. It's going to be broken. The craving's going to be broken today. My will is yielded to you, God. My will is yielded to you right now, Lord. We serve notice on the enemy in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
Oh, come on, as we're praying, let's sing. Let's rejoice in the presence of God. So I've got some baskets of oil up here with no flies. It's fresh. Poured it yesterday. Prayed over it last night. We prayed over it this morning. And I want you to know you can leave with fresh oil this morning. So by faith, I think I have enough for everybody. I've got some plastic ones over there for the kiddos. And I've got some glass oil, uh, bottles of oil over here for, for the adults and the junior high teenagers. I had one vision that I know for sure that I had in my entire life. And it was at this altar the summer after my freshman year at Urshan College. I interned here and I saw blood all over my hands. And God reminded me of every single time I had an altar call like this, and I left not changed. God worked on me and gave me the ability to go and to make a difference in the people that I had influence with at school and everywhere else in my life, and I didn't do it. And God showed me all of the blood that was on my hands. So what I want you to do today is I want you to take this oil, and I want you to hold on to it take it with you to work leave it on your desk at work put it in your backpack and let the oil lead your life don't let shame and guilt and fear and condemnation keep you from going and stepping out 